Einstein in his paper also shows a fundamental property of the determinant of the fundamental tensor, which is the metric tensor. The determinant of the product between g mu alpha and g alpha nu, it is equal to, due to the properties of determinants, the determinant of g mu alpha times the determinant of g alpha nu. On the other hand, we also know that the determinant of g mu alpha times g alpha nu is equal to the determinant of delta nu mu, which is equal to 1. Therefore, it follows that the determinant of g mu alpha times the determinant of g alpha nu is equal to 1. Now, let's call the determinant g mu nu or g mu alpha, whatever you want. Like this, we call it G. Then we can also find the rule for the transformation of determinants. G prime can be written like this. It is the determinant of, by definition, dx mu dx prime sigma dx nu dx prime tau. And here we have G mu nu. We go from the system characterized by the variable x mu to the system characterized by the variable x prime sigma. From here, we get that this is equal to the determinant of dx mu dx prime sigma times the determinant of dx nu dx prime tau times the determinant of g mu nu. But this is g. And these two determinants here are equal because they are actually the same determinant, determinant of the same matrix. This is like a Jacobian, if you want. Each one of them is a Jacobian, because we are taking derivatives with respect to the new coordinates of the old coordinates. This can also be written as determinant of dx mu, dx prime sigma, squared times g. And from here, we see that the square root of g prime is equal to the determinant of dx mu with respect to x prime sigma times the square root of g. Now Einstein notices that the determinant of the metric tensor is negative, therefore here it should be more appropriate if we put a minus sign inside the square roots. This can be done. Because, for example, you can change the sign in this equation here, and then you take the square root on both sides. On the other hand, the law of transformation of the element of volume, which Einstein calls d tau, and this is integral dx1, dx2, dx3, dx4, so he calls the variables x1, x2, x3, x4, instead of x0, x1, x2, x3. It doesn't really matter. There is also something different in Einstein's notation, and it is the fact that these coordinates here are not really written with the upper index. They are written like this, x4, x3, x2, and so on and so forth, x1, with lower indices. This is just Einstein's notation. I prefer to write them as upper indices because of their behavior. But we are really talking about the same thing. And also we know that for multivariable calculus, d tau prime is equal to the determinant of dx prime sigma with respect to x mu and this multiplies d tau. This is just the rules of the Jacobian because as I said, this is a Jacobian. But now you can infer from this equation here and this equation here, d tau prime multiplied by the square root of minus g prime is equal to d tau multiplied by the square root of minus g, because these determinants here and here would cancel each other. One is the inverse of the other, and therefore we get this result, which shows the invariance of this infinitesimal element.